So we live in a world <clears throat> where science is dominated by inference. Conclusions are based on evidence. Deduction, where we arrive at a conclusion by reason, is considered less persuasive. A third way is sometimes called abduction and is rarely used. And by the way, my definition of abduction is where the trajectory of knowledge leads to a conclusion. I think you should use them all, infer, deduce, or abduct, depending on your state of knowledge. Biology really depends on inference. It's how medicine is tested. Gather evidence, apply probability. It's all about the control group. You need evidence that people will get sick without the vaccine. It doesn't matter if the vaccine works. If unvaccinated people don't get sick, probability is not satisfied. That's why the COVID vaccines were quickly approved. So many people got sick in the control groups. It was a statistician's dream. But the people who actually came up with the mRNA vaccine used deduction. A virus is like a serial killer. If you learn a serial killer is five foot six and blonde, you may pick the right person, but a loss, a loss, also many of the wrong ones. That's what most vaccines do. Your immune system learns to attack the right thing and some that aren't. But if the serial killer is in your own family, your only cousin with blonde hair, you will pick the right person every time. A few people deduced if A, your immune system is very familiar with what your own cells make, B, uh, your own cells manufacture a piece of the virus, and C, your immune system is going to say, what the hell is this? These scientists actually were not believed because the body's complex and deduction follows a short path that ignores some complexity. People wanted inductive evidence, but the evidence required a lot of money, which they couldn't get until COVID. Now, in the early days of the pandemic, there was scientific and public debate about whether viral particles stayed airborne. When someone infected, sneezed or coughed, what happened to the viruses on the liquid spray? Were they on droplets that fell to the ground or on aerosols that floated off, hanging out for hours. Most respiratory droplets are large when they're expelled, greater than 20 micrometers, something that big can't fly. But I deduced, as I'm sure many others did, that the evaporation rate of a droplet under 100 micrometers is fast. Surface area determines evaporation and tiny droplets have enormous surface area compared to volume. A 25 micrometer droplet can only travel about five centimeters before it's shrunk to five micrometers. So in a 10th of a second, it becomes more influenced by air currents than gravity. Deductive logic supports aerosol transmission, but the CDC and WHO require inference, evidence, it's nearly impossible to obtain real world evidence of aerosol transmission. Inference testing needs a control. If the hypothesis is SARS spreads via aerosols, the control is aerosol transmission doesn't spread it. That's called the null hypothesis. The problem is if there's no evidence that supports aerosol transmission, the null hypothesis that aerosol transmission doesn't spread the virus wins. But remember, that evidence was impossible, is impossible to collect. Is the absence of evidence evidence of absence? It depends how well you've looked. If you think you left your keys on a shelf and you look really closely on that shelf, that's reliable absence of keys being evident, right? But if you're looking at the shelf from across the room and you forgot to put on your um, glasses, say, that's not reliable absence of evidence. You can't use inference without evidence. You should use deduction then. 
Telescopes can detect a galaxy about 13 billion light years away, but the most distant planet they can find is 13,000 light years. If our hypothesis is planets exist in most galaxies, the null is planets do not exist anywhere else. Now we've only detected planets in a millionth of the universe. Does the null hypothesis win? Of course not. This needs the third type of logic, abduction. When you can predict knowledge growth, given that every improvement of technology reveals more planets, well, if you're heading out beyond 13,000 light years, you're going to assume there's planets. 98% of DNA is not genes. The function and importance of these sequences and their RNA transcripts that do not code proteins look different today than 20 years ago. In 1995, it was believed 5% of DNA sequences transcribed RNA. By 20, 2005, that had increased to 50%, and by 2015, 95%, today, 99% of DNA in human genomes transcribes. So in the 20th century, most biologists thought DNA outside of genes was junk. Between 2000, 2010, that started to change, first 5%, 10%. 15% of those sequences had some important function. By 2015, that had risen to 80%. So use abduction. There's a trend to uncovering capacity and function in what we used to call junk DNA. The reason we're finding it is because technology improves. It continues to improve. A reasonable conclusion is we will find that most of the 3 billion base pairs in the human genome have a function. The direction and velocity of this, this knowledge trajectory is clear, and that's abduction. Also, by the way, the universe is actually much bigger than 13 billion light years. At the beginning of the 20th century, we thought the entire thing was, I don't know, just our galaxy, basically. But evidence led to the inference that it was bigger and bigger, and finally 13 billion. We can now deduce that space expansion means we see things as they were when they were much closer. The edge of the observable universe is actually probably 46 billion light years away. But what about things that we can't ever see? Now, inflation theories, which are deductions, find the universe to be maybe 23 trillion light years across. Using abduction, a reasonable conclusion is that the universe is much bigger than what's visible and could be infinite. That's the trajectory of our knowledge. You've got to know when to infer, and when the evidence falters, it's time to deduce. And if knowledge is moving, track it beyond the horizon with abduction. Thank you.